In this lesson, I'll be putting together my final project. I'll be combining a few of the things that we've done so far and merging them all together into a fun animation that's a little bit more dynamic than just a simple movement or morph. For my final project, I decided to combine my morph with a couple of the smear demonstrations that I had done. So I've combined a lot of that into one file right now that I'm going to walk you through, and then we're going to finish it up together. Or rather, you'll watch me finish it up. So what we have here, I'm just going to scrub through this. We've got our secondary character, and I have him morphing into our original monster character. So I used the same morph animation that I had done before, I just reversed it because we had morphed this one into this one. But here I wanted to start with the dog, so he morphs back into this monster and then I use this smear demonstration that I had done where his eyes bug out of his head and his tongue comes out. I want my final animation to loop, so I need to get from this character back into this character. My idea is that when this guy morphs into this guy and his eyes bug out of his head, his eyes are bugging out because he's seeing himself. I need the camera to pan over so that we can see that he is looking at himself in his original state as the little dog. I'm going to make his eyes pop back into his head so hard that it pushes him backwards. And as it pushes him backwards, we're able to see the original character and he will go off the screen to get us back to that starting point. So let's start drawing that sequence. We've got a new frame already and I've got onion skins turned on. Because I want the, his eyeballs to pop back in and look like there's a lot of impact where it's sort of pushing him backwards, we need to make the movement very quickly. So you need to have less, less frames so that it happens very quickly. We're going to have them come almost all the way back almost immediately. So I'm going to draw the starting point for the eyes. And I'm going to bring them to like right here, right off the bat. And then we'll just trace over the rest of the character as is. All right, let's get a new frame here. As I mentioned, we want this to look like it's happening fast. So if it's happening fast, there's going to be some impact to it. What I want to do is have his body shift because of the impact. So let's knock his head back and then maybe we can make it look like the eyes are going back into his head. Let's draw these two circles here, but maybe we'll make a black outline so it looks like they're going inside of his head. And then we don't need this cheek line because they're just going straight into his head. And we can leave the tail where it is so it's just his head popping back and somehow his feet are staying on the ground. But maybe the tongue can sort of swing a little bit from the, from the impact. When you're doing this sort of thing, it's definitely a little bit of an experiment. You're going to sort of have to see what's working. So. Even though his head's kicking back, I don't think it's enough movement now that I'm watching it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the character and move him physically back a little bit and maybe even rotate him a little bit. Let's uh, get this into view a little bit better. Going to transform it. And kick him back, and then I'm just going to line up the heels so that he's sort of in the same spot. Let's turn off the onion skin to see how this looks. Okay, I think that's pretty good, but since he's rocking backwards now, 
I think we should have his his foot sticking out a little bit. So we'll keep that one on the ground, and then maybe this one is starting to swing up. Let's uh, turn onion skins back on so we can see if that's making sense. So I think we'll try one more frame where he's starting to fall backwards before he starts sliding out of frame. Let's get the tongue to start moving out a little bit here. Maybe we can exaggerate the head even more. Maybe we can make the eyes even smaller in there. We'll see what it looks like if we sort of pull the head back, like the eyes are smashing back his, his head, the back of its head, if you will. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this even more, maybe get both of these feet just sort of sliding. As I mentioned, when you're drawing these frame by frame things and you're figuring things out, they get a little rough. Like this drawing could use some work, so I might go back in and tighten this up afterwards to make it a little bit better. So since we're launching him out of the frame, I'm going to move him back even more so that we're starting that progression. So I'm just going to start sliding him back and I'm going to hold the shift key to keep him on that same baseline. So now we see that he's starting to go back. And we want him to go fast, so I think I'm just going to do one more intermediate frame where he's in motion. And I think I want to exaggerate this movement even more. So I'm going to sort of pull this head and just have him back like that with his feet just sort of flying out in front of him. Since this is the last frame of the sequence, I'm going to move this character back so he's almost off the frame so that we can see the movement happening a little bit better. Okay, let's play it and see how it works. Okay, I still feel like this snapping movement isn't happening as fast or as dramatically as I'd like it to. So I'm going to go ahead and try removing one of these intermediate frames that I made to try to make that process just, just a little snappier. Okay, let's see what it looks like if we just get rid of this first frame. So I'm just going to drag this up into this extra video group so that I can preview it without getting rid of it in case it doesn't work. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off and let's just see what this looks like with that one frame removed. I think we can do one more thing to make this even better. What we're going to do is a little bit of a preload here. And what I mean by that is just an extra movement to sort of accentuate the character popping back. So let's go ahead and add a new frame. And then let's drag this to the front so that we have a blank frame right at the beginning here. We'll turn the onion skins back on so that we can preview what's going on. And I'm just going to drag these extra frames over so they're out of the way, so we're not seeing them in the onion frame. And now I can just see the frame that's before, and that'll make this a little bit easier. What I want to do is just add in an extra movement here where he just slightly leans forward to sort of accentuate when it pops back. The more dramatic the anticipation or preload is, the more cartoony and fluid the animation will be. If we don't have any anticipation movement, like now, the movement will, will make the motion feel a bit stiff. So in order to make this movement a little more dramatic, we're just going to come in here and pull these eyes just a little bit more forward. Just to give the character a little more lean. So I'm going to do the same thing with the, with the body. Let's just sort of lean it a little bit more forward to follow the eyes but we're keeping the body on the same sort of axis so when we get to the feet we'll keep them in the same spot we just want the character to lean slightly more forward 
And here with the tongue, we'll just droop it down a little bit further just to follow that lean that is happening with the eyes and the body. So we'll just draw the teeth as they are, pull the tail in, and then as I mentioned, we'll keep the feet right in the same spot. So again, this is just a little bit of a lean to sort of accentuate the movement when he pops back. Okay, cool, that's definitely better. So now we just need to slide our little dog character back into the frame to complete the loop. So I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here and grab a loop of our wiggle sequence for our dog character. I'm gonna hold option and drag those up into the video group that I was using as a temporary placeholder for that extra frame before. Okay, so with these three frames selected, we're gonna go over to the little menu on the side of our layers window, and we're gonna go down to convert to smart object. So this smart object is gonna give us some controls that we wouldn't normally have with a regular frame. And it also neatly packages this little loop into one sequence. So we're gonna make this whole loop sequence move as, a, as one unit. So I'm gonna drag it over so that it's on at the same time as our other character going off the screen. So what we're gonna do is go into this little menu underneath our video group and you'll see this transform option. So we're gonna click on this little stopwatch. So what, that is gonna, what that's gonna do is it's going to let us control the position of where this thing is so that we can actually move it along the timeline. So as you can see, I just zoomed in a little bit so we, we can see what we're doing a little bit more and add more space. So let's go ahead and click on this little stopwatch and you'll see this yellow little diamond that appears. What this is doing is marking the position for where that video group is at that point in time. So if we drag this out to the end and then click it again, we have another position. So now if we change this position, it will move our character across the sequence. So if we go, since we want him to be off screen, I'm clicking on that first little diamond and just dragging the character back off screen. So now when we scroll through this, you'll see the character slides into frame. So the only issue now is that he comes into frame a little bit too fast. So I'm just gonna slide him back a little bit and then let that first frame of the sequence finish that movement from, you know, off the frame to his starting point. Now that I'm happy with how the animation sequence is working, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these frames. Even though you'll only see them for a very small amount of time, Having the animations be a little bit better and a little bit tighter will just make the animation that much better. So in the next sequence, we're gonna tighten these up and then add some color and some finishing touches. Uh -huh. 